Here in Armenia, it's like a new level. I could have ran faster than that bus was going some of the time. <laughs> Middle of the woods, Armenian people are very kind. The dark history of Armenia has discovered 4,000 different stars. An old Soviet telescope space observatory. It's not going anywhere. A lot of Iranians come here. And... Good morning. Right now I'm heading to another hostel to meet up with the guys because we we are staying at different hostels. And we're gonna head to the Armenian Genocide Memorial and Museum. I do not know much about this history at all, so I'll have to let you know more about it when I learn about it from, from the museum. We don't have much of a plan beyond that. It's raining and so we're gonna just do something inside. But yeah, come along and we're gonna learn about the dark history of Armenia. So I just made it back to my hostel. Unfortunately, I couldn't film anything at the museum, nor the outside monuments because it was pouring rain. I tried to film a little bit of vlogging, but the guy told me to stop, so I had to just put my camera away. But I'm gonna talk about the genocide in Armenia. Armenia was one of the first Christian claimed nations in the world. It has been declared a Christian nation since the year 301 AD. In the early 1900s, it was a part of the Ottoman Empire. The western part, I should say, of Armenia was part of the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire was Muslim. So the Ottoman Empire tried to execute a ethnic cleansing of Christians in Armenia, which resulted in a mass genocide and the death of over 1.5 million Armenians. These people were sentenced to work, they were put in concentration camps, they were shipped to the Syrian desert to be executed, they were raped, all kinds of absolutely unthinkable, terrible things. In the year 1919, Armenia finally gained its independence and they closed the borders to Turkey. I will put a link in the description of an article relating to the mass genocide if you are interested in reading more about it. Unfortunately, it was still raining when we left and I couldn't get any shots of the outside monuments because they had this huge tower spike looking thing and then this like round dome kind of memorial. But it was pouring rain and it was so foggy we couldn't even see the monuments barely. On a lighter note, tomorrow though I've got something pretty cool planned and I might just put these videos together because I don't have much room today. So. Thank you for watching today, and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. It is the next day now here in Yerevan. I'm on my way to the bus station. I've got something pretty cool in store for today. I'm headed to a town about 15 kilometers away from here, and I'm going to an old Soviet telescope space observatory. It is now pretty much abandoned and I'm gonna hopefully go on a tour there. They offer tours, but I don't know when, so hopefully I'll get a tour. Thankfully, it's not raining today, so I will get some good shots in. Let's go. I'm here at the bus station now and I've got some time to kill. There's so many old Soviet buses here and so many Ladas, it's awesome. There's a lot of Ladas in Georgia too, but here in Armenia, it's like a new level and they're incredibly preserved. It's so cool. You can go a lot of places from this station. Moscow, Istanbul, Iran. We're actually very close to the Iran border, like less than 50 miles. A lot of Iranians come here, I think, to find jobs or to travel, I guess, because it's one place they don't need a visa for. I've met quite a few Iranians here actually. It's one place that I definitely would like to go someday, but with an American passport, it's it's damn near impossible. You have to be on a tour, you need a special invitation, and it's a process, but I hope to go one day. It's a beautiful country. I've heard a lot of good things about there from other travelers, and 
people that I've met from Iran. Very, very kind people. So I just made it to this town of Burakan. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. It's this little town in the mountains. Unfortunately, it's pretty foggy due to the elevation. I hope we'll still be able to have a good view of these telescopes and get some good shots. Yeah, this place is like so old, it's crazy. There's like nothing here. Just old houses and stuff, very small village. The bus ride to get here was so slow. Not that I expected these Soviet buses to be fast, but it was ridiculous. It was like, I could have ran faster than that bus was going some of the time. It was like less than a dollar to ride about an hour, so can't complain. I am on a tour here with a researcher who studies in this building. He's gonna show me to the big telescope where he looks at distant carbon stars. That's what he studies. So it's pretty cool. This place is, it's in the middle of the woods and it's eerie, especially because it's foggy today. It's pretty cool. They, they have here also two small telescopes, half meter and 40 centimeter, classical system, Cassegrain systems. Now I will go to, to see largest telescope. So this here is the half meter telescope? Yes, half and, meter. And these ones are not in use anymore? They, these are not used? Okay, um, uh, uh, they, are, uh, they are using to study variables for monitoring. monitoring. Oh, monitoring, okay. So not for research? Yes. So you said you collaborate with somebody at Harvard. Yes, what, yes. Uh, what, uh, what kind of work are you, are you collaborating? Uh, the research field uh, for me and for Paul Green is identical, carbon stars. Okay, so research carbon field, stars. Same object. Okay. Same object. But a collaboration. Yes. yes. Cool. Fog is not not very well visible. Oh, wow. The dome of 2.6 meters. You can kind of see it. That's the big one. Small telescope here. Oh yeah. This territory belongs since 1963 belongs to Department of Astrophysics of Leningrad. 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 Yeah. Wow. Leningrad now is Saint Petersburg. He was saying they go to the smaller telescope because it's wide angle. They look and observe there and they locate an object. And when they locate the object, they find the coordinates of it and then take it to this big telescope and then they can get a way higher resolution look at that object or that star. So cool. On this telescope was done spectral survey northern sky and part of southern sky and as a result near 1500 galaxies with ultraviolet excess was discovered. It operates since 76. Wow. Part, upper part is in rotation. The, okay. Uh, when evening time the observers are coming, the, the computer is opening the dome. The dome is opening and then after a pointing telescope is uh, not only for you only and only putting computer coordinates, only mm -hmm. two coordinates, right ascension and declination and to switch telescope in automatic regime. After observing the field, field telescope is going to second coordinate, third coordinate. 
So okay. He, all this is doing. So it goes automatically. Yes. Okay. There yes, yes. uh, is my mirror located primary mirror, and after observation, uh, uh, you must close primary automatically. Primary, uh, primary mirror. So at night this dome opens up, this white part here, it tilts and it tilts towards wherever they're pointing the telescope where they want to view. The light comes through here, collects into the data collector there, and then it's then transmitted from this to a computer. And each image takes about 20 minutes or so, he said, for the light to collect. And I'm guessing it depends on what they're looking at too. That's really, really cool. This place is so big, he was telling me in 76 when it was being assembled, Ukrainian military was here to aid with helicopters to lift the pieces on the dome and the telescope. It's pretty wild. This telescope has a 2.6 meter mirror, and he was saying that in Chile, there is a telescope with a 100 meter mirror. And that mirror is segmented. I mean, it's not one big mirror. It's segmented. He was saying it was a project funded by 15 European countries. And it's located in Chile because the weather there is so good. It's clear 325 days out of the year. And as well as it sits on top of a 3,000 meter mountain. The visibility is amazing. Also many specialists from NASA. Really? From NASA. Uh, so people from NASA came here yes, to visit? Yes, come. they come and they have very important uh, discussion uh, what to do, what uh, to observe, what uh, type of space project to prepare, et cetera, et cetera. Many uh, uh, famous astronomers from NASA, Daniel Widman, uh, work with European observers and they uh, study Galaxies with ultraviolet excess, which was discovered by the help of one meter Schmidt type European He was telling me that the telescope transmits data in two different ways. The, the first type is the image itself, like the spiral galaxies and the stars and everything that you can see. The second way is the spectrometer, and that is a graph with different coordinates, and it, those coordinates show where the location of the object they're looking at is, as well as chemical makeup and size. So the physical aspects of the stars and the galaxies. It's just so cool that man can create something that we can learn about stars and galaxies an unthinkable distance away. It just blo it blows my mind. It's crazy. He was also saying that he himself has discovered 4,000 different stars. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. That was very okay. cool. It was nice. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. Man, what an amazing experience. This guy was so passionate about his work. You could tell he was really into what he was doing. He was excited about talking about it, showing me around and showing the pictures that have been taken with this telescope. So cool. I've always wondered what a real telescope looks like underneath the dome and now I got to finally see it. Really cool place. And I'm super happy I, I found out about it and got to go on a tour as well, a private tour. It only cost $13 or something like that, so well worth it. So now I just have some time to kill here in this village. I'm trying to find some food, but there's like literally nothing here. The shops are not even open, like the tiny mini marts. Check out that lot of, it's not going anywhere. This one's nice though. I found a convenience store that's open and they told me through no English and hand signals and everything that the bus will come here at 2.30 so I've got some time to kill so I think I'm just gonna grab a beer from here and just chill out. Cheers. These people invited me inside their shop or inside their house. I don't know if they live here or they just work here but they're so kind. They're preparing some bread and some tomatoes very nice people and I'm sitting by this warm thing instead of sitting outside in the cold. Armenian people are very kind. Man, these people are very hospitable just like Georgians. Now I'm waiting for the bus 
and heading back to Yerevan. Tomorrow I'll be heading back to Tbilisi, back to the hostel and continue volunteering there. But it was a super cool day today. Absolutely amazing to talk to a astronomer and there's a cat that keeps like coming down by my feet. He wants attention, but I don't want to pet the cats here. They have, they can have diseases. Anyway, it was a real cool day. I will end up seeing you tomorrow on my way to Tbilisi. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.